Actually, I was with Bertram Mill Circus for many years. Before that, I started with the Robert Brothers Circus. My father ran his own circus. And then I went, at the end of Bertram Mill Circus, I went to Sweden for one year, the Circus Scott. And then I was offered by Bernard Crabtree, who was the general manager of the circus in Blackpool, the job as ringmaster. And I went for the interview with him, and I said, well, I'd always toured. I said, well, I'll try it for one year. Well, he and I got on so well together, and we became firm friends that I stayed, and I stayed there 25 years. So within that 25 years, of course, many different things happened. And then, um, at the end, they were getting rid of the animals, and I didn't really like the idea of t staying at the circus with no animals, because I'd fought for animals in circuses, and I'm not a hypocrite, and I couldn't stay there. But on that last final year, the final year, 1990, with all the animals, the lions, the tigers, the elephants, the horses, the ponies, which what a true circus should be. Um, then uh, we were making a documentary about the last years of the Blackpool Tower Circus. That was the reason there's all the television cameras in there. And uh, I was going along with this. And um, then my wife knew about this. This is your life three months before. I'd never said a thing, and you know, life carried on as normal. And she would say to me, How was the documentary? I said, Oh, it's going pretty well. We're doing this and we're doing that. And on the day that they were going to do the recording of This Is Your Life, they said, You've got to go to Manchester and record a piece about the Bell Bellevue Circus. And I kept thinking, Why do I have to record a piece for Bellevue Manchester Circus when I'm doing the, the documentary about the Tower Circus? And they fed me a book, very cleverly fed me a book, which said that the circus in Bellevue was started on the suggestion of the directors of the Tower Circus in Blackpool. Aha, uh -huh, a link there, you see. So that I went along with it. So in the morning I was picked up and um, went across to Bellevue and doing all this recording in Bellevue. And on the way back, we got in a traffic jam. Now I'm worried to heck that I'm not, not going to get back for the show. They're a hundred times more worried than me because they've got This Is Your Life coming up. So we got back to the show and, you know, all they said to me that when you go into the ring at the end of the show, in the finale, walk down the ramp onto the plateau in the middle of the water finale, just look at the camera ahead of you because that is the eye line we want. Of course, professionals, we, we do as we're told. So we're like, chief, I march down the ramp and the place is kind of exploding and they're all cheering and blah, 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 blah. And I thought, this is going really well for a documentary. Then there was a tap on the shoulder and I, I, I kind of a, a double take and he said, this is your life. And Michael Aspel was standing there. That was the start of a most wonderful, wonderful evening. And I genuinely didn't know anything about it coming along. As I said before, my wife knew about it, and my son knew about it. And interestingly, my, I used to come into the theater, into the circus in the morning, check things out. So I went, I came in this morning, and my son is sitting in the seats. I said, good morning, morning guy, what are you doing here so early? He says, well, I've just come down to check some wires. What I didn't know, the whole team of This Is Your Life were lying down in the seats because I came unexpectedly into the circus. So they were really worried that I should see them. I, I, I thought it was a dream. I, it, I, I thought it was a complete dream. I was so shocked, I'm genuinely shocked because we were ma so making this uh, documentary that when I kind of did the double take on the book, I saw Michael and he, he looked at his smile and went, wow. I, I didn't know, I don't know what I really felt like at that moment. I, I felt as if, it, yes, as if it was a dream, yeah. Quite, quite amazing, yeah. So then they took me back to the dressing room and I felt like a condemned man. I'm alone in the dressing room. The kind of, the makeup artist came in, didn't say anything, just did the makeup room, room and went. And then somebody came in with a glass of whiskey and a ham sandwich because they said to my wife, what do you think you'll want after the pickup? She said, well, I think you'll, you'll need a whiskey <laughs> and a ham sandwich. When I wanted to go to the toilet, so they said, all right, somebody will have to take you. I said, well, I know where it is. No, they said, no, no, you have to. So they put a towel over my head and led me to the toilet so I couldn't see anybody, <laughs> which is kind of quite bizarre, you know, be led out. Yeah. Yes, of course, great friends were there. Doddy was at the play, didn't, couldn't make it, but did a message. 
um, Ron Lucas, the ventriloquist from America, again, he was in Vegas, couldn't be there, but he messed my message. The Young brothers came along, wonderful, wonderful Chinese hand balances. They came along and did a little bit. These were great pals of mine, Ragana, who used to do this fantastic act, balancing a sword on the end of a dagger, climbing up a very high ladder. Bobby Roberts was there, I mean, because Bobby and I used to do a juggling act together years ago. We did a little bit of juggling, yeah, and Bernie Clifton there, he caused, he caused havoc, you know, with his... <laughs> well, that's Bernie Clifton. He, I've done pantomimes with Bernie Clifton, and they're always chaotic. But it was, it was a fun day. And just to see all the circus fraternity there, the Jerry Cottles, the Robert Brothers, the Fossets are there. It was wonderful, you know, it was a, a great, great night. I'm going to get very emotional now because I worked for Bertram Mill Circus and he was wonderful, wonderful to me. He taught me an awful lot. We respected each other. He was very, very, very ill. And John Fisher told me that when he went to see him in London, he said, listen, we're doing a This Is Your Life and we would like you to do a little bit on it but we will record it for you. And he said, well, whose is it? He said, Norman's. <clears throat> and he came to Blackpool. Yeah, that's the last time he ever traveled. Great, great respect, love the man. Was a, there was a very good party back at the Imperial Hotel in Blackpool. We had a wonderful, wonderful time. And at the next day at 2.30, I was there for the matinee. <laughs> I'm still very passionate about what I do. I love every, every show. Every show is a challenge. I remember people, people say to me, well, when are you going to retire? I said, and, and do what? And do what? You know, dig a garden, paint a room, you know. Oh, I hate all of that. You know, I work. <clears throat> with wonderful, wonderful people, dedicated people. And the thing that you have to say about people in circus, their feet are on the ground. No airy fairy, no, there's no superstars. We're all stars. Everybody's a star. Every actor here has his own right to be here. And we all need each other. And I always think, as my job as ringmaster, <clears throat> I'm like a salesman in a shop. I'm selling this program to you, the audience. You know, and that's my particular job as a salesman. It's my responsibility to make sure that they all join in, they feel part of it. I always say, you know, it's your applause, your laughter, your cheers that drives the show along and helps us create a magical atmosphere. It does, it does lift. It makes you re people realize that the circus is up there with the, any other, you know, entertainment like the ballet, the opera, and incidentally, Circus is recognised by the Arts Council now, which it never used to be, and it is an art form. You know, it's a, the fact that we tour around, we go to places where but might not have theatres or whatever. And kids are coming and seeing live entertainment. But, I mean, some of those shows at Olympia, you know, you'd get kind of, on the press day, maybe about 7,000 London kids there watching the show. You're all invited by Cyril and Bernard Mills, you know, it was great times, great days, you know. Unfortunately, it won't come back. You know, I'm just, I'm just really, really happy I've been around to do all that. I'm still doing it. <laughs> well, I, I always, well, I always say at the end of the show, at the end of the zip -ups, every night when I say goodbye to the audience, I say, you're never too old, you're never too young, you're never too cool to go to a service. Good night. <laughs>